Hey guys, welcome to a new video. My name is Finn Snow. I'm living here and filming in the Philippines. And for the last three years, I've been traveling, adventuring, exploring this beautiful country. And today I'm going to be reviewing my gear that I've been using for the last couple of years. Some is new, some is old. Showcasing what I use, what I don't like about it, and what I love about it. This is my main gear, my cameras, equipment, accessories, etc. But we want to start off by saying that this video is not sponsored by any company here. I do work sometimes with them, but this is my honest opinion about the gear that I'm going to be using. So we're just going to get that out of the way. All right, the main one we want to talk about first is the my main camera, the Sony a7R 3 and that's the one that I've been using for 80% at least of my shoots. Stills, videos, b-rolls, underwater, it does everything. 42 megapixel, incredible 15 stop I think, dynamic range, meaning that the highlights and the shadows are very well balanced and you can play around with them if you take uh, raw pictures and the video is also phenomenal. The only thing I don't like about the Sony cameras is the color science. It kind of messes up the skin tones, which you have to pull back when you're editing your photos or the video. So everything I shoot, I always have to color grade. But there's one thing that no camera can compete against the Sony is the autofocus capabilities and the dynamic range. So there is no perfect camera out there. They always have their disadvantages and advantages. For example, the Fuji has amazing color and usually don't have to do any editing afterwards. Canon camera, they have amazing uh, skin tones and they have a flip out screen. Another great accessory that I use is the Peak Design. Here on the side you have this plug and play type of clip that is a strap that goes around my neck. Let me just get that. I love this accessory because it's so quick on and off. A lot of times I don't want to have the strap on, but if I'm hiking or even on a motorbike, it's nice to have your camera on your side, not inside the backpack, because if you need to shoot something, boom, done. But if you have it in the backpack, you have to plug it out, open the backpack, put it on your side, it's a mess. And if you don't want to have the strap on, you want to unplug it, just like that, boom. I have the 12 to 24 millimeter super ultra wide lens right now because my main one, the 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 G master lens is being repaired. Anyways, enough talk about this camera. Let's put it up there and talk about the other things. I forgot to mention, I have this protective glass on back of it. And as you can see, it's already broken. So perhaps I saved the screen already. All right, now we're filming on the Sony a7R 3 And one of the most important thing that you have in your accessories is this cleaning accessories. When you change the lenses, sometimes dust or dirt, whatever gets into the sensor, you have to blow it out. Let's go over some of this stuff. What you have here on my right is uh, my underwater housing. I bring it whenever I do free diving, scuba diving, but if I'm just doing hiking, normal adventures, I don't bring that with me, obviously. Along with the underwater stuff is a lot of accessories such as these Pelican cases. They protect this housing because it's extremely fragile, the glass in front of it. So when I'm traveling, you have to bring a case. Wow. It's gonna protect your equipment, such as this one. Foams inside, which gives it a perfect protection whenever I'm traveling. Booyah! This is a Nauticam housing, which fits perfectly for my Sony A7R 3 which I do both video and stills. Other accessories that I use for my underwater stuff is of course lights, one of the most important things when you're filming underwater. These are my Caltem lights. Ah. Extremely well sealed. Ah. That's tough. They're about 15,000 luminous. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Oof. Now one thing I want to say about this equipment, obviously it's very expensive and when you're doing stuff that I do 24-7, it's a profession. I can't recommend enough to buy 
top of the line durable equipment because things break down in the end. No matter how well you take care of your equipment, it will, something will happen. It just, that's how it is. And uh, for example, these lights, they're extremely expensive. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm investing into this underwater stuff, buying like a, uh, cheaper stuff, third-party brands, they always break down. So with these lights, I said to myself, I'm not gonna buy, you know, the uh, third-party ones, which is fine, by the way. But if you're like me, that is always filming, always filming, something will happen. And decide with these ones that I'm gonna buy top of the line. And little do we know, after one of the first dives that I did, it broke. The light broke. And I was extremely disappointed after only a couple of dives, these top of the line flagship lines, got broken well one of them but with the quality products great company behind them i was able to send it back to repair in manila to switzerland and back to the philippines within two weeks so you buy something really good they're gonna take care of it if it breaks down so let's say for example if i bought you know a cheaper version that would have broken down i would have already lost that investment so perhaps you know that saved me already but if you're someone just doing this for healthy, I obviously recommend just to get budget one, cheaper ones. The difference between the quality from the top of the line to the uh, you know average isn't that great. So just keep that in mind. So 90% of the time I shoot with these lights, they're ambient, making everything around you super bright. Pop out the colors because if you don't, everything is just gonna look washed out, kind of tealish color. But with the light, the image looks like how your eyes are seeing it. And that's about it for the camera gear that I use for underwater. So these lights, the underwater housing and this Pelican case, that's my camera gear for my underwater stuff. So let's get that out of the way and talk about the rest of my gear. Normally I don't travel with this Pelican case, but I use it for my big lens, a tripod and some other accessories if I can fit them in. Great durability, you don't have to worry about people handling it. And if it breaks, which is super rare, Pelican has a lifetime warranty. So these are kind of army made Cases very strong and if something happens they'll uh, get you a new one. My good friend Case Logic backpack. This one has gone so far with me. And as you can see, it's coming to its final end. Probably my favorite part about this design is that the bottom is hard case and waterproof. I don't know how many times I put it down and there's a soaking wet ground or even on my motorbike. This helps protect it greatly. I am switching this back out soon because obviously I carry a lot more stuff now with me these days. <laughs> you can see how much it's been used. Oh man, it had its time. You know why I can't open it easily anymore? because of salt water. So much salt water has been splashed onto this bag throughout the last two, three years, that it's kind of in the zipper, making it stuck and sticky. This is where I put in my laptop, camera, lenses, drone. It's kind of tight, a little bit too small because I actually, I broke my drone just by having him inside the bag because I was cramping up all the equipment. And what that did is that it broke one of the propellers here. This one here. So this part got crunched inside of the back because of the size. So that's why I'm getting a bigger one. Speaking about drones, we got the Mavic 2 Zoom. Great companion. My third one, I pressed uh, two of them before. Completely destroyed them. Still waiting on this one to completely break. It's missing a few parts, like here. It's missing that one. And then this one is broken. Still flies, still does the job, but you can't get it a perfect smooth hyperlapses anymore. So that's a little bit disappointing. There's a new drone coming out, the Mavic 2 Air. I might get it, might not. And that's the Mavic Air. First one, it's a backup one. Rarely use it. I would only use it if this one breaks. Two extra spare batteries. And the crazy thing about what I do, guys, I film so much. I've done over 400 travel videos in the last three years. There's a bulge there in the middle. It's inflated. That's how much I've used these things. This one is a little bit, but safe to use. This one, however, 
got a massive bulge and it's very risky to be flying this one. Probably won't be using it ever again. And here's a secret, how to get a really awesome drone footage. You buy these Polar Pro drone remote extension sticks. The original ones you get with DJI are kind of short, but these ones are longer. They're gonna give you extra smooth mobility. So when you pop these on and you're flying a drone, you will get a lot smoother curves, rotations, back and forth, up or down. This is my secret to a better drone flight, extension joysticks, I believe they're called. Get these. More batteries, drone remote. Obviously a hard drive, this is a four terabyte. All right, which one should we pick next? Oh my Odin, it's getting so freaking hot. Sorry guys, I gotta put the aircon on. <laughs> Tripods, this is a carbon fiber. I don't even know the company name, I just saw it on Lazada. And it was so cheap, I think uh, like 100 bucks. And you can see there's uh, four extension sticks. Normally it would be only three. And that's because it's so tiny. And that's what I was going for. A tripod that was so small that I could just, boom, attach it on here. And I know I said before you should uh, try to invest in the higher quality things, but when it comes to tripods and other accessories, maybe that's something it's okay to maybe try to reduce the cost of equipment. This one doesn't even have a freaking name to it. It's just like TP668SC. Like, I guess that's the name of the tripod. My older tripods, they were complete garbage. Wow. The foundation is great aluminum, but the top is plastic. I'm not saying all plastic is bad, but when you put a heavy camera on here, and you try to stabilize it, and usually it tilts a little bit, so it kind of bends because it's plastic. So that is my second latest one. Rarely use it, and this is my third old and crappiest. Thank you, tripods, for your service. A camera that everybody needs in their kit is obviously GoPros. Waterproof, shockproof, you can vlog on it, dive on it, hike with it, it does everything. All around, situation is great, easy to pick up, start shooting right away. Compared to the big DSLRs or the mirrorless, it's always a little bit hectic to bring them up, attach everything, get it ready for the shot. But with the GoPros, press a button, start recording, that's it. All around is probably the best value for the money for what it can do. And if you're on a budget, GoPro 6 is probably the best one to get because that version, they brought the image stabilization, meaning all the footage you're gonna be filming, it's gonna be super duper smooth and not annoying to watch. But finally, we got a couple of lenses and filters. So if we bring those together, and they're all 82 millimeter, attaching to my biggest lens. So obviously these big filters won't attach to my smaller lenses, but with this cheap step down ring, you can attach that and the other filters. So you don't have to buy extra ones. I have four different filters. Two of them are polarized. I always use this one when I'm around water because it's gonna reduce a lot of glare. A lot of footage, if you don't have them, it's gonna be a huge bright glare reflection spots coming at the lens. But if you have that one, it's gonna reduce everything a lot better and even see through the water. So you guys kind of see better what's down there or even bring out some of these beautiful bluish colors around the tropical islands. Now the two that I got is, uh, one is a fixed density 64ND and the other one is the Peter McKinnon 2 to 5 stop one. And I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed with the Peter McKinnon one because it changes the colors and I've noticed that with a lot of variable ND filters, it messes up the color so much. So when I was using the Peter McKinnon one, for the first time and I usually shoot auto white balance because I trust the camera and then I looked at the footage and it was all weird colors, greenish skies, it was, was kind of strange. So just keep that in mind if you want to invest in a expensive filter like that. When I'm shooting underwater I use filter as well, red filter and then with my GoPro I use like an orange red filter. Yeah, filters are a big part of what I do with filming. And lastly, my backup lens, 24 millimeter, 1.4 G Master. This is the sharpest lens I've ever used or ever seen, like with all my friends. Nothing compared to this sharpness as well, the color that it brings out. But actually, I don't use it that much because one of my issues with it is the focal length. It's 24 millimeter. If I wanna vlog with it, it's too close to my face. And if I wanna shoot wide, it's kinda too narrow. But in terms of if I wanna shoot something else beside me, 
it's amazing. I freaking love this lens, but I wish I would just use it more. I wish it was maybe 18 millimeter, maybe 20 millimeter, then it would be great for vlogging. By the way, it got picked out as the lens of the year 2018 or 19, I think. And this big bad boy, this is my 200 to 600 millimeter lens. The one that I use the least because I haven't had the chance to go into a situation to use it lately. I tried to go to the Philippine Eagles last year, but it was kind of hard to set up an expedition with that. But I want to go into the wild and document them, so I'm still waiting to have a chance to really test out that big, big lens. And lastly, we got the 90mm 2.8G lens, and it's a macro, meaning you can shoot something very close to you. I mainly use it for underwater diving, and if I want to get up and close to these tiny little beautiful creatures, this is the one that I use. So yeah, that's about it. I'm obviously not showing you all my chargers. Usually I bring like a whole shopping bag that's just filled with cables and chargers. So that is it for my 2020 camera gear that I've been using throughout this year. I'm not sure if I'm gonna add anything more unless a new camera. I want the Sony a7S III to come out, but I'm not sure. If not, I'll switch to Canon because I need those colors for my underwater shooting. I love this gear. I love playing around with it and testing new things. So I'm excited what happens in 2020 if there's gonna come anything new out or in the next one. And I hope we can start traveling very soon. Stay safe guys, stay healthy, work out, exercise, be positive, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.